Oscar movie to me is that one that came out and it really got you excited. You want to tell everyone you met to go to go see it. You want to have conversations about it. Uh, it. It was on the movie, but it led you down different roads and different conversations and ideas. That's Oscar movie to me, and and performances you'll you'll never forget. They're indelibly printed in your brain and in your heart. Hey there, movie fans. Welcome to For Your Consideration Collider Video's weekly award season countdown to the Academy Awards taking place just maybe a little over a month and a half from now at the end of February 2019. Joining me, as always, they are the highlight of my week. This is the reason for my existence at the moment. Jeff Snyder, Perry Nemiroff, the A-team when it comes to award season talk. Look at these great, awesome faces. And we are closing out 2019, ladies and gentlemen, with a look not just at award season. We do that every week. But we are going to talk about movies that have, for the most part, been overlooked during award season. Maybe they got a little love here. Maybe they got a little love there. But when it comes to Oscar talk, when it comes to Golden Globe nominations, SAG Award nominations, in most cases, a lot of these critics group, these are movies that have pretty much been overlooked in most cases. And we are going to show them a lot of love right now on Collider FYC. So, I mean, Perry, let's start with just a movie of yours that you love that is just overlooked okay so this one wound up firmly in my top five of the year and i love it it might be the movie that i saw on the big screen the most this year and it's love simon I think that movie was so, so beautifully done. And Nick Robinson is fantastic in it. And I just loved this idea of taking things that feel like traditional elements of a high school romantic drama, dramedy, whatever, but then applying a new level to it. I feel like it made that idea so accessible to so many people out there. And that's sort of the key to greater acceptance and understanding. And I think the movie just achieved that beautifully. And it's a feel good movie too. I Absolutely. Okay, Jeff, what's uh, what's uh, what's start starting your list here? Am, am I allowed to switch if we don't have a graphic prepared? No, Wait, don't what do you just mean? jump in. Everything's uh, prepared. Well, yeah. but no, because I we, oh, because we're yeah, okay. We, we did all that right. thing. Anyways, all right. You I'll, can you can you can go for right. it if you want. I'm, to. I'm just gonna say <laughs> I get I guess you know uh, since, since Scott and and our my list uh, overlapped a little bit, I'm gonna switch it up. I'm gonna go with the 188th highest grossing domestic film of the year. <laughs> well, can you guess what it is? Which oh stars Hugh oh. Jackman, uh, uh, and it is yeah. Jason Reitman's The Front Runner, which has grossed Ooh. all of 1.9 million dollars this year Ouch. man uh i didn't see this coming i actually thought the front runner had a great trailer um it's a great role for hugh jackman his best in years he's really really good in this movie there's just so much to like about the front runner because Gar this gary hard story it's like it started the tabloid journalism almost in a sense but why okay why is it only 188 on the list of gross hot top grossing movies of the year and why why isn't it getting this kind of like you're the only person I know really who loved this movie. I didn't. I didn't love it. I just thought it was really good. I thought Jackman was really good. The script was was tight and it, and it had that Aaron Sorkin kind of feel. Like I'm surprised that the script hasn't gotten any attention. I just I guess Sony just kind of botched this release. But I, I think that when it does uh, hit hit VOD or is available for rent, you guys should check it out. Well, I think it's also the danger of having your movie premiere premiere at a film festival and not get award season buzz there. I feel right. like if anything, you get the buzz and then maybe it'll fizzle out. But if you don't get it from that starting point, that's when you're dead in the water. And I remember that that first day of Telluride, uh, it was, uh, I saw, let's see, it started with The Old Man and the Gun. Then I saw First Man, which I liked a whole lot more than you did. And the third movie I saw that day was The Front Runner, which I didn't love. But I understand why you liked it. I understand why it's one of your overlooked films. My, my main overlooked movie of the year, a movie that I really did love, a movie that I thought had everything going for it to get the kind of awards attention that it truly deserved is Wildlife, uh, directed by Paul Dano, uh, written by Paul Dano with his girlfriend Zoe Kazan. Uh, this got three Spirit Award nominations, including Best Actress for Carrie Mulligan, Best First Feature, and Best Cinematography. I thought it was a lush, beautiful film. One of the 
really, I mean, maybe it's not my top 10, but it still is a very strong contender for one of the year's very best movies. Talk about Overlooked. It is a beautiful looking film. It has a great score, uh, a superb, I wouldn't say it is probably the best performance I've ever seen Carrie Mulligan give. She was nominated for her performance in an education almost 10 years ago. And I thought that this is her finest hour and it was so, so overlooked. She's fantastic. I agree with you. She, she's great. And it's a shame that we're not talking about her more uh, this award season. Yeah, so it goes. I mean, I feel like when you're talking <laughs> about a limited release like this, it, it either it either hits or it doesn't. Right. I feel like this one just flew under the radar. Oh, okay. what, what's next on your list? Uh, next on my list, I know that the award season and you know being overlooked for awards is a little bit of a stretch with this one but I freaking adored Bad Times at the El Royale. I loved that story. I loved that ensemble and that location. That was one of those movies where I was completely enveloped in that location and was just so fascinated by the mystery. And usually I'm the kind of uh, movie watcher where if I don't get certain answers, it frustrates me. In this particular case, I walked away with a couple of questions that I enjoyed having on my mind. And talk about a performance in Cynthia Erivo, hands down one of my favorite shots of the year is that super long shot where she's singing over it and it's exploring the location so beautifully. I thought Drew Goddard really did a very, very solid job with his second feature following Cabin in the Woods. That one was kind of a wide appeal success. This one didn't really do as well, but it might be one of my personal favorites of 2018. I, I, I loved Bad Times at the El Royale, and, but you know, watching it, I could feel like you know what this is not going to make like a, this is not a commercial type of accessible movie it's more i could see it being more of a cult film and uh, you know uh, i love the way that drew goddard directed the movie that you know you watch one scene and then you see the next scene from someone else's point of view which makes you just sort of like reassess the movie the scene that you just saw previously it's a challenging film it's a rewarding one the amazing, a terrific ensemble cast. Talk about best acting ensemble. Bad, bad times at yeah. the Royale, but you're shaking your head, Jeff. I thought Why? it was an entertaining, overlong mess from Fox, but guess what? What? A lot of people would say that about the next film on my list, which Let's is Red Sparrow. Red Sparrow. Oh. I thought Red Sparrow was awesome. I was, I got quoted in the ads, and I'm, I'm not Sorry quoted uh, nearly as much as Scott Mans. Maybe it's because Scott Mans wouldn't offer a quote that they use me. <laughs> Uh, but I thought Jennifer Lawrence was absolutely fearless in this. It's her best performance in years. Uh, I, I love the mystery behind this movie. I thought it looked great. It felt like like an old Hitchcock kind of movie. Um, Francis Lawrence really impressed me with it. And yeah, send me to horror school, Uncle. Okay, that actually, I got to tell you. That absolutely qualifies as an overlooked film. Red Sparrow was a very, very good movie. Uh, I don't know if it's in terms of its award season prospects, but it certainly was overlooked. You know, no one's been really talking about that movie at all after it came out, I think, like in March. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a very, very, very good film. Solid. Jennifer Lawrence is fantastic. Dude, she leaves it all out there. She yeah. goes for it. She really, she really does. That is absolutely worthy of being mentioned in this overlooked show. Uh, uh, overlooked on my list, The Death of Stop. Stalin, mm -hmm. written and directed it. by Armando Iannucci. Uh, he is uh, the uh, executive producer of Veep. And, uh, you know, this is a film that I, it is a very dark comedy and it is a very timely comedy, even though it takes place, you know, in, in the early 50s with, you know, the, like the title says, The Death of Stalin. The cast is amazing. Steve Buscemi is great in this movie and uh, Jason Isaacs is superb in this movie. The screenplay is terrific. It is a sharp, sharp movie. It's just so uh, uh, it, it's such a good, dark comedy and a timely one as well. But it can, also it came back, I think, in March. And it's just not being talked about enough. Overlooked. Go. Sadly, I did overlook this movie. And I've so, got no good excuse because they made it so accessible to me, too. It was just for one reason or another. Something kept getting prioritized. And that screener is still sitting at the top of my pile right now. Well, watch it. you yeah, got plenty of time. Bring I've, it back to New York. I really should. I, well, that is that is the plan, is to bring that. You know including many others. Perry, your dad. Yeah. 
who I met okay. at the press day, by the way, for Bad, Bad Times, Times at the El Royale. Royale. Your dad, who's awesome. I mean, you know, he Mr. thinks Nimmer, you're awesome too. Oh, your dad's awesome. You, you can easily win my dad's heart <laughs> over when you speak so hi. highly of his daughter. Tell him I said hi. I will. And tell your mom I said hi I too. I'll tell the whole family. And give them the gift of the death of Stalin. <laughs> I will. This holiday you season. have my word. You have my word. I will. Um, next on my list, yeah. another gift that I plan on actually bringing home to my family this holiday season is the gift of Tully. Tully! There, yeah. This actually fits the title of this episode of FYC so perfectly yeah. because, well, I think the movie is just fantastic overall and just the, the element of discovery as you go along with Charlize, Car uh, Charlize Theron's character in this movie and you start to discover what she's really going through and how she's processing everything. But talk about an award-worthy performance. Mm -hmm. Charlize Theron should be in. Maybe it's a very difficult year. It's, it's hard to say that she should be cracking the top five in a lot of these uh, nominations that we're giving out right now. But I think she should still be in consideration as an outlier, and it does not feel like anybody's talking about her enough. Right. I completely agree. It's her, Tully Carrie Mulligan, Rosamund yeah. Pike, they're all being Rosamund overlooked. Pike I don't get too. it. Well, now, now Rosamund Pike she and, and uh, Charlie Starin, didn't they get nominated for Golden Globes? So, yeah. uh, and, and she got nominated for Best Actress Comedy. But, uh, the, you know, it's weird, because I don't see Tully as a comedy. I see it as a well. drama. But regardless, she got nominated, I'll take it. And, uh, and Rosamund Pike did get nominated for, for uh, Private but, but what a year for Jason Reitman. But what great year for Jason Reitman. But Jeff, I know you love the front runner. Tully is the better movie. Yes, but it is. Yes, hey, it is. both of these films, good to see Jason Reitman getting a lot of love. I think Re Jason Reitman is a great director. I, I've always loved his movies. Obviously, you know, some more than others. I still think Up in the Air is his best movie. But I agree with you. Tully is awesome. What's next on your list? Young Adult is my favorite Jason Reitman Young movie, by the way. Young Adult is excellent. Um, yeah, all right, you're giving the gift movie. of the death of Stalin, the gift of Tully. What's better than the gift of children? Instant Family is yes. Oh, my yeah! List. I don't know if this movie is still in theaters or not, uh, it but it, it was such a pleasant surprise, really. It, it, it made me feel good inside. It made me laugh in places. It made me cry in places. I, I thought Rose Byrne uh, was tremendous in this movie. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I really liked Isabella, Isabella Moner, who was our up-and-comer of the month last month. Um, it's, yeah, it's just a nice family movie. Uh, I had it in like my top 20 this year, to be honest. You know what? I'll tell you, Instant family was not what I expected and that made it better than I expected mm -hmm. because I thought it was going to be like a daddy's home gross out below the belt potty right. humor fart joke kind of movie that's not what this movie is at all no. it is it is very relatable it is very it's a lot deeper than you would think a movie like this would be it has a much much bigger heart than you think it would be and of course it is very funny Rose Byrne and Mark Wahlberg were great and by the way Rose Byrne another overlooked film this year it's not exactly on my top oh, five yeah. Oh, but Juliet Naked, uh, Juliet Naked. Yeah. Uh, absolutely an overlooked movie. I know we don't have a photo for Juliet Naked, right. but it is also an overlooked film. Uh, but no, she's so I agree with Tig you. and Octavia were really good in that movie, too. Mm -hmm. They kind of uh, provide the, the humor. Like, when it comes to overlooked movies, I, I think I'm going a little, like, I'm really sort of diving in the deep end, finding, like, really, truly overlooked. Listen, Instant Family is a great example. Tully is a great example. Uh, you know, Red Sparrow, great example of overlooked films. But when I think of an overlooked movie, a a movie that I saw at Sundance back in January, and a movie that I just thought Ethan Hawke as a director, such an accomplished mm. director with this movie, and a great, talk about a star is born kind of a yeah. performance from Ben Dickey, Blaze. Blaze, starring Ben Dickey as Blaze Foley, the uh, uh, country troubadour who uh, died uh, way before his time. Ethan Hawke directed this movie with so much love. It is a lush, beautiful, uh, it, it is a movie that really stays with you, a movie that hangs on the moment. And uh, I, it won the special jury prize for acting for Ben Dickey. And I thought, you know, this is the first time he's ever really acted in a substantial role like this. And it is a terrific film. Ethan Hawke is an amazing director. Just watch this movie. You'll see what I mean. I really want to see it. I love the trailer. Uh, totally missed it when it was, As uh, did if, I. if it was even in theaters. It, it was wasn't like... theaters because I did a couple of Q&As with you. Mm. Oh, okay. Well, if, if, 
that's you a got, terrific. You got, if you've got a screener, send it my way because I definitely uh, want to. By check the way, that you know, out. if you want to get quoted, I know you probably didn't get quoted for. Uh, Teach me. Uh, but you know, I think I think I am going to get quoted for uh, for Instant Family. So oh. uh, check that out. <laughs> What's next devil. on your list, Perry? Um, all right, this is probably you know the biggest swing on my list, but I want to bring it up because I know that this franchise has a lot of negativity around it right now, and this movie does something so fresh and different and exciting to me that I just wanted an excuse to talk about it again and overlooked seems like it could be a possibility with all the competition at the box office so I'm putting it out there again go see Bumblebee if that franchise has completely lost your interest like it did me this could be one of the most pleasant surprises you experience this year at the movies I was so shocked by how quickly it won over my heart from the very beginning because a lot of the stuff that we've seen involving Cybertron has completely lost my interest lately. The opening sequence of this movie caught me in an instant and then all of a sudden you're with Haley Steinfeld as Charlie and that connection between her and Bumblebee is so beautiful and pure and all of that emotion enhances the action. This to me was the complete package. I, I agree. I thought Bumblebee was absolutely fantastic and everyone, everyone who has seen this movie, I, everyone that I certainly know, they all say the same thing. I'm shocked. What a surprise. I did not expect to like this movie as much as I did. I still can't believe how intense I'm being about Bumblebee. It's but so you, weird. It, it's deserving. Yeah. It's deserving. It really is. I mean, if you if you like the model, the formula of movies like E.T., like uh, like uh, uh, the Black Stallion, like the Iron Giant, this movie follows that model, a girl and her dog type of a movie, and it works and it's funny and has a lot of heart. And in the end, of course, it does have the action. Bumblebee is terrific. I think it'll do really well. I think uh, uh, people who have been burned by the last four Fantastic Four, uh, sorry, uh, no. Fantastic Four. <laughs> Wow, how did I get on that? Uh, the last four Transformers sequels will find themselves redeemed by Bumblebee, mm -hmm. which is not only the best Transformers movie since the original from 2007, it is by far the best overall, and it's not just a great Transformers movie, it's a great movie, period. Jeff. Mm, next movie on my list. Mm -hmm. The Sisters Brothers. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. Speaking oh, of that okay. quotes, that was one of the the. Have the, you seen the DVD cover of Sisters Brothers? No. I'll just leave it at that. You should go look at it. Is it yours? Yeah, it's mine. Oh. It's, there's two quotes on it, and I'm on the bottom. Very good. Yeah. Way to go. Awesome. And I do love that movie, so I'm proud of it. Yeah, it was. Uh, Jacques Audiard did a an incredible job. I thought this was like the best western I've seen in years. I love the cast. Uh, John C. Riley is fantastic in this. Joaquin Phoenix, Jake Gyllenhaal, Riz Ahmed. Ahmed. Um, the cinematography is great. The score. I just, it was a, an interesting movie. I didn't really know what to expect. I hadn't read the book, um, but I really liked where this one went and, and, and enjoyed my two hours watching it. Well, in terms of best westerns, uh, I'm going to go with the film that, that got a little bit of love from the, uh, uh, you know, the, hmm. the critics groups in terms of, uh, you know, its performance by Brady Jandro. It's The Rider. Uh -huh. The Rider, written directed by Chloe Zhao. Uh, this is a real existential meditation a film. Uh, Joey Ch Brady Chandro plays a, a cowboy who has a, a head injury and uh, is trying to get back on the saddle literally and figuratively. A really lush, beautiful film. Uh, a movie that I saw at the San Francisco Film Festival back in April and it just was riveting and, and absorbing and really cast uh, a, a bittersweet heartbreaking spell and really stayed with me the rider is a is a is a beautiful film Overlooked. i saw this one thanks to this guy's recommendation and i would say it comes down to personal taste for me more than anything and i'm a little sensitive when it comes to anything bad happening to an animal so i found that a little off-putting yeah. too off-putting for me to actually say this is one of my favorite movies of the year but there is no denying that the craft is just peak level across the board in this movie. Completely great. Yeah, it'll be in my top 10 this year. Chloe Zhao, to me, is the, the best up-and-coming female filmmaker that there is, and Marvel got their hands on her, right? Mm, yeah. um, that's pretty impressive. Uh, yeah, I, I love this movie, and, and it was one that I had to force myself to watch uh, because I, I didn't want to believe the critics, but you know what? They were totally right. Okay, Perry, what's next? So this last one, I wanted to put this on my list because I feel like any time I find a new director that I want to get out there into the world and everybody to know her name, even though I'm not even sure I'm pronouncing it right still, I had to put Revenge on my list. And if you have a Shudder subscription, you can go watch it there right now. But this movie was a really, I, I can't I even call it this. a, I can't even call it a pleasure.
pleasant surprise. Well, it's not pleasant, but it wasn't a surprise to me because everyone had been talking this movie up and it took me so freaking long to watch it. And then finally I did. And Coralie Farage, I believe that's how her name is pronounced, is the director behind it. And this is a movie with a whole, it's, it's a very violent movie with a whole bunch of very brutal set pieces with some exceptional kill scenes and exceptional makeup effects but it's not just about that you could look at this movie and see her style just all over it there's no doubt in my mind that nobody could have directed this story the same exact way as she does and it just seems to me like if she puts that same precision and even respect for her characters to any other story out there we're going to end up with even more great films from her wow i've not not seen this movie and is it what's it on netflix or something uh, like that? it's available on shutter right now shutter it's oh oh shutter streaming, oh, service, streaming yeah. service for horror movies yep. right okay Good. I'm going to take your advice, and I'm going to bring this it. home to the manses, um, just like you're going to bring home. You might want to push pause. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, wait a second. For the whole family kind of movie. <laughs> but, but, but I recommend it. That's a style to the Nemiroffs. Oh no, no, you're right. You're right. I, it's, it's, it's I a don't bit necessarily of a know. If yeah, this my is parents are going to be like, cup of tea. "Who is this pirate person?" <laughs> I, I thought uh, Matilda Lutz. This is this is like the perfect movie for the Me Too era, by the way. Uh, <laughs> wow. The, the, the filmmaking is fantastic, and those earrings, like her costume, yeah. I think it's it, it's one of the most iconic costumes Ooh. of the year for me. If okay. I saw those earrings, I would be able to tell you what movie they were yeah. in. Okay. Wow. Yeah, I could see it now. Okay, what's next on your list, Jeff? We, we This is our last one, right? Yeah, that was yeah, my last. Is, All right, oh, I then, have one more after I this. guess number one for me, uh, the most underrated movie of the year, as I tweeted earlier in the week, American Animals. Amer oh, American yeah. Animals. Yes. Bart, yeah, Bart, Bart Layton's American Animals. It, it was just, it's a movie I saw more than any other this year. I think I saw it four or five times. Everyone I've shown it to has dug it. Um, it's about four kids who, who rob their college library of some rare books. But the way that it is presented and the, the mix of actors and then the, the actual real people that they're playing interacting with each other in certain scenes and the way that it plays with like un, unreli uh, unreliable narrators, that kind of stuff, the editing in the movie is fantastic. It, there's such precision. It's, it's just like you feel the cuts. It, uh, I, I loved everything about it. So please, if you, do, if you, if you watch one more movie before before 2018 ends, make it American Animals. If you don't like it, I will send you something in the mail to make up for the last two hours, okay? Uh, but, um, That's how, it's a Jeff Snyder guarantee. Uh, 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 this guy is absolutely right. American Animals is absolutely fantastic. It is absolutely been overlooked. It was at Sundance, right? I think, uh, I think it started yeah. this run yeah. at Sundance, I mean, yeah. I, I actually didn't see it at Sundance, but I did see it uh, after after September, and I, uh, I completely agree. I think it is, uh, it's a great heist movie, mm -hmm. uh, especially when the yes. heist goes wrong. Mm, with I saw comic it because results. he recommended it so many times, and yeah. I will say the the Jeff Snyder guarantee it held up there. The Jeff Snyder guarantee, if there is such a thing, I I, <laughs> I use it very sparingly. I don't that doesn't come out very no, often. No, listen, your your choice Jeff is it, guarantees. Your choices on this overlooked uh, for your consideration special have been right on the money, both yep. of yours. Thank you, thank you. Uh, my final movie, and I think the final movie we're gonna talk about, is The Old Man yes. and the mm -hmm. Gun. Overlooked yep. to the extent that uh, it, it's it's been overlooked. I mean, I felt like Robert Redford uh, really. I mean, this is his uh, his 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 finest hour as an actor. Uh, a movie that really plays to his strengths. And when you see the film, especially the last uh, few minutes of the movie, that sort of sends feels like a real a send off to him because of, if believe what he said, he said this was going to be his last movie as an actor. Kind of backpedaled on it because that kind of got too much attention. But the movie uh, directed by David Lowry was really, it was a lot deeper and more profound than I expected it to be. The scenes between uh, Robert Redford and Sissy Spacek were, were, were beautiful, like two actors at the top of their game, just, just uh, amazing scenes. The dialogue was great. Casey Affleck as the cop yeah. on his tail. It was, a, it was a really, really good movie that where I really felt like the whole was greater than the sum of its parts. And he, I don't know how well it did at the box office, but it's definitely not been bandied about during award season, and it should be. This is a classic movie star turn, turn from Robert Redford. One of my favorite of all of his uh, performances. I think he should absolutely be in the Best Actor conversation mm -hmm. for that that fifth slot that uh, you know we're, we're debating Ethan Hawke and John David Washington. 
It should be Robert Redford easily. I love everything with him and Sissy Spacek, everything with him and, and Casey Affleck mm-hmm. playing that cat and mouse game uh, where, where Casey knows that it's him, but the, you know he can't really prove it or do anything about it. Uh, David Lowry did a fantastic job with this. So, so nice call, Scott. This I, one I, just barely got nudged out of my top 10. I adored this movie. Yeah. It's almost like a little, uh, like a period piece time capsule too, mm-hmm. where you just get totally consumed by that period of time that it takes place. And his charm is just infectious. And it does have a bittersweet quality to it that I found really touching, but he sells that part almost too well. I couldn't He's believe so how quickly I fell into step with him. He is so charming in this movie. And again, you know, Robert Redford as an actor has only been nominated once. Do you know what the movie was that he got nominated for previously for Best Actor? The Sting. Oh, wow. Now, he won huh. as a director for Ordinary People, beating Martin Scorsese for Raging Bull. He won for Ordinary People. But uh, as an actor, I feel like, I mean, yeah, sure, there are definitely acting performances in the top five uh, that we talked about on other For Your Consideration shows. And at the same time, I feel like in terms of a career, a career capper, this is as good as it gets for Robert Redford. He does deserve to get nominated. The movie overall is great. Probably be out on Blu-ray and streaming services before you know it. Overlooked and absolutely um, an overlooked movie, you know? Just like all of the films we talked about on For Your Consideration today. And before we go from this show, we talked about how, you know, uh, you know uh, in, in other shows, like The Great Team, at Collider, and I have to give hats off to the man who almost every week, every single show that I've done for Collider, <laughs> has sat in the booth making sure that everything is cut perfectly, goes smoothly. That man, of course, is Adam Smith. Woo! Adam Smith, yes. we <laughs> could not do it without you. You are the man who holds it all together. You know how, like, in some of those cartoons, like the Buzz, Bug, Bug, Bugs Bunny cartoons, there's that one screw, that one bolt that holds the whole machine together? That's Adam Smith. He holds his whole thing together week after week. He is the reason why you're watching this seamlessly edited and cut and produced show right now. You are the Collider superhero, Adam Smith. How, right? Am I right? Am I right? Uh, brilliant. Not, not Absolutely. Just, not Give just him this the Oscar. show. So many shows so across many the shows. channel. For Movie your consideration, talk, Adam Smith. Movie Mailbag. talk. Mailbag. Mailbag. Like, whatever. The schmodown. Anything. Anything that goes on here, Adam Smith, you are the man. And as for, as for, for Collider, for your consideration, uh, what a great show this was. What a great way to end 2018 by talking about great overlooked. I'm really proud. This was a great show to do with the both of you. Perry Nemiroff, Jeff Snyder, always great talking movies and award season films with you. And the next time we talk, it'll be 2019 and award season will keep rolling along. Can't wait for the next time. And until then, FY, see you later. Hey everybody, Mark Ellis here. Thanks for watching this episode. You want to watch more? Then click up here. Or you can click right here for more great content from Collider. If you haven't subscribed to Collider Video, do so right now and share this vid with your friends. Thanks for watching.